sell something we sell we're gonna say a floor okay a floor okay somebody calls us so we get a call please do our floor or please give us a number please give us a price okay uh, what then happens is one of us goes goes to the client's house looks at the job and what we typically are looking for is like okay look is this floor really wavy we look to see what issues would be with giving them advice and sometimes somebody would call us and be like hey i need new drywall hung what's the price and i'll be like it's you know dollar 25 a square foot because i already know you got a regular wall that's new construction regular drywall there's a specific price okay but typically we're going to go go to the client's looks that doesn't make sense go to the client's house and look okay house and look and what we what i try to do is when i'm doing the actual bid i'll make notes of specific things like customers like hey look i like this pretty vic grill that we have here i want to make sure we leave it okay so in my bid or in my notes i'll have leave item or i'll have take out this thing whatever it might be so there's a note okay so i submit i submit a bill or i submit an estimate that includes my notes so i give them an estimate of it's almost always uh, almost all of our estimates are per square foot pricing. Uh, estimate with labor and materials. Labor and materials. Um, and then they, based on the estimate and how many other estimates they got, will either approve the estimate, make a change, so they either approve or deny it. Approve or deny. If they approve it, then they get put on the schedule. Okay? So typically, if they approve it, they pay a 5% retainer, which puts them on the schedule. Okay? And we try to give them a somewhat accurate you know, schedule based on how many jobs you have in front of them, 
Uh, like right now, we were supposed to technically start a job last week for a customer, but I said, look, I think it's gonna be the end of August, I'm not positive. So they knew it's in this time frame, okay? So they paid a 5% retainer and get put on schedule, okay? And on schedule. Okay, uh, once, once schedule comes around, then I uh, print off, or we do, we print off uh, a work order. And really for us as a small company, we don't have like a separate work order form. We just print off the actual estimate that was approved and we show the guys. So I'll send it to whoever's leaving the job. Like, look, this is what I, I as a sales guy sold the customer on. I said, we're gonna do this floor. We're going to probably take two days to do this job. So I gave them a price. I gave them an estimate of how long it's gonna take. And, you know, an estimated schedule of when we get started, okay? So I print off the work order, give it to the lead guy. And then I meet the lead guy on the job and do a walkthrough of what needs to be done, okay? So if the lead guy has any questions, then he goes over with me. If he notices something, they're like, hey, look, you know, you, you've got two days of labor in here, but you know, the last job we did took five days. Are you sure gonna be able to pull this off? So we'll have a discussion. Either I'm gonna assign him some more guys or we talk to the customer and say, hey, look, this is gonna take a little bit longer. Might adjust the price a little bit, see if there's room to have a change order if needed. Um, but on that walkthrough, we go over concerns, safety concerns, you know, like, hey, look, we need to be careful about, you know, sharp edges, trip hat, you know, like the things that OSHA or whatever, uh, and cost concerns about the job, okay? So after we've done our walkthrough and the guys get started, then the lead guy, the lead guy then takes over that job, okay? I'm no longer in charge of that job, okay? The lead guy takes over that job. He makes sure the job's clean every day. He makes sure that the resources are there. He makes sure that whoever's the crew on that job isn't doing something the wrong way. So he is now in charge, okay? I've already gone over what he was supposed to do. His job is now to run that job based off of completing that job. So he's running the job based off of our walkthrough, okay? And he's keeping an eye on what the estimate said we were supposed to do, so we're not doing extra work. Um, the, uh, the job then gets finished, okay? So, job gets finished, but what we always, what we're seeking to say, Ben's been kind of teaching us this, is we are gonna say the job is at 95%. Because a finished job means all of our tools are put back away, we've done a walkthrough, it's clean, there's no trash. We've personally walked it with the sales guy before the customer, um, making sure that everything's the right way before the customer ever gets there, okay? And even then, uh, what, we, what we might do is we'll have a walkthrough, an inspection, uh, with, with the sales guy or, or the operations manager, sales or op, because several of us kind of play both roles. So sometimes we're in operations, sometimes we're in sales, you know, we're a small company still. So, uh, but we'll do the inspection with our team first, and then we'll do, hey, look, we're at 95%, we'll talk to the customer. 
Uh, is there anything, you know, that you notice that we need to take care of for you? You know, we're, we're getting close to being finished. Is there anything you'd like to add that would be a change order? And one of the things that uh, we're trying to get a lot better about is not is there anything you'd like done, it's anything you'd like to add or that, that's, that's clearly not a part of our original scope of work. That would be something we can actually bill for. Not that we're gonna do a bunch of free stuff, okay? Um, but we're gonna do this 95%. We're gonna do a walkthrough, do the same thing with the customer, ask about change orders. And, and there'll be times where I'll be like, look guys, we're too busy, we can't do any change orders right now. We'll come back later if there are more other things, you know. Um, okay. Um, the uh, one thing I didn't mention here. So when we're doing the, the walkthrough, when we're doing the job startup, we call it. I then bill the customer thirty-three percent. Okay. So that's what we have. That normally helps cover our material. It doesn't cover our labor. You know, but that normally gets most of our materials covered to where we have stuff going on. The issue that we run into a lot of times is because jobs that didn't go according to plan have lost us a lot of money. That sometimes is just covering the leftover excess from the job before, which is dangerous. So our, our goal as a company is to make sure that we're running job to job using that money for that job. Uh, but. Uh, after we've done our walk through the customer, we are then going to get them to sign off saying we're done, okay? We're gonna get them to sign off that we're done and we actually are working on like a forum to where they can kind of rate how we did um, based on our performance as a crew, okay? So we're asking them, hey look, is there anything we can improve on? Uh, you know, our goal is to be a long-term have a long-term relationship with you so so like it's in your best interest to like have a friendly relationship with the customer because like if the customer thinks you're an ass they're probably not going to rate you very highly okay yeah. and you, you're really probably a text that says what is i an ass <laughs> i mean yeah that might all our customers ain't going to be there either right no it's <laughs> true yeah we have some that are like angelic but that's not maybe the norm yeah um, the, uh, the, this, this, this rating, this customer rating, and it, it, it may not actually be on paper. It may just be like, Hey, look, we're trying to do a good job for you. We know we have areas we need to improve. Obviously we're integrity is doing the right thing regardless of anybody's watching. We talked about that last week, but this is, Hey, look, we're, we're seeking to grow. We're seeking to learn. We're not going to say we're doing anything wrong, but we're trying our best and we're trying to improve, you know, always trying to improve. Um, rating our work. Customer signs off. Client signs off. Thank you guys for being done. They may mention something. I then bill for the balance. So I bill for the remainder. Which is which is basically most of the money, you know. I mean, like it's they they have there, there's a lot of guys who like will bill fifty percent up front or something like that, and then just walk you know screw customers walk away. Um, but they still, in our case, they still have control of most of their money until we get done. Yeah. Okay. So you're which, thirty eight percent. So five percent plus the thirty three. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm at thirty eight percent until we get done, you know, unless it's a really big job and then I'll have like a 50, like a, I'll bill halfway through the project if it's a big one, you know. Um, but we bill for the remainder and in the bill for the remainder, we ask them to rate us on Google because um, part, of, part of our local advertising is getting rated on Google for how well we did, how we didn't do, because I mean, that's Typically, if I'm looking for somebody to do anything local, I look at the reviews, make sure they're legit, make sure there's no issues, okay? So that is the basic framework of the job. I have a, am 
my uh, amazing secretary made a comprehensive form that I will send to each one of you guys just so you know. Because I mean, eventually you might start your own business, you might have a side gig doing stuff. These are processes that are important for a company to have guidelines to go by, okay? I'm gonna talk briefly about issues with jobs that are very common, um, job issues. So number one issue is, in, in our case, is being prepared. timelines. So I mean, being prepared is part of that. But what ends up happening is we schedule a job to start. And it starts late. Yeah. We start late because uh, another dog job's running long. Because we ran long on other projects. Okay. Yeah. So the customer is already a little antsy for some reason or other. They're like ready to get their bathroom redone. They're ready to get their house painted, whatever it might be, roof done. They're antsy, so we're already starting off a little uh, out of source, okay? Yep. Next thing that happens a lot of times is our materials or our tools are not ready. So we're, we go to do a mud job, and then we spend four hours cleaning out the texture gun and uh, like finding all of our mud knives because instead of putting them away, they're just covered in mud stuck in a trailer somewhere. Which is very common. Um, so our materials or tools sometimes that's because there's no water there. Are not ready. Well, I, I'm, I'm still calling. I'm still calling that one is like that five percent yeah. at the end of the job is putting things away, which half the time is going by a car wash and washing off the stuff. You know, at the end of the job, that's part of the job. That job is not done until actually my dad, who was here this weekend. That was one of his suggestions. Is like, hey, just so you know, us Martins aren't really good at like finishing things. You should probably clean your stuff. I didn't teach you that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> you know, but uh, um, other things that affect the timeline side of things are not a clear, not a clear uh, scope of work. So scope of work. is what we're supposed to do. It's supposed to be a, a list of, we do 300 square feet of flooring, or we do seven sheets of drywall, and it ends up being like 30 sheets of drywall, you know? Those are things that can majorly affect. That's something I try to get before I even leave my house. So I, I can get all my tools situated and make sure I have what I have. And that's part of being a lead guy. I mean, it's kind of part of why you make so much more money than everybody else, you know? Yeah. But no, um, it is like if, if you're a lead guy, part of your role is to make sure you come prepared mm -hmm. so everybody else can be going. Okay, and so you know what's going on, so that and yeah, and so you're aware of what's happening. Yeah, stop there. And, and normally, I have my I try to have my lead guys come in early, um, so they're kind of already ahead of the game by the time the crew gets there. Kind of a normal thing. Okay, yeah. another thing that. Uh, ends up happening on jobs is uh, besides timeline is quality control. So quality control, um, and we run into this often is we we do a really good job on getting like uh, say a floor all the way done, okay, um, but we don't protect the floor, end up scratching the floor or getting mud all over the floor. So something that was done ends up being undone. So then you're almost on it time and a half. And for me, you guys already know, I mean, we're not like raking in the dough. Like we're running pretty tight margins because it's a competitive market. Well, and it's not just a competitive market. When we have nice trucks, we have uh, workers' compensation insurance, you know, regular insurance, paying taxes like an upstanding citizen, for the most part, um, our cost is like five times higher than the Joe Schmell with the rusty pickup truck. You know, now we get nicer jobs because people want the professional, but 
there's, I mean, I'd say without 50% of the time right now, we're not the lowest bidder. Like our bids are higher than some of the other bids, which is good. Like I want, I don't want to be the low bid. I want to be the bid that's, you know, like mid to upper end, because we're going to be focused on quality, skill, professionalism. Those things are all important. Okay. Um, so quality control is being careful to not have to go backwards. So, I mean, we've talked about it before. I think we talked about it on C when we talked about cleaning or cleanliness. Um, part of quality control is if a customer walks in at lunch, he sees a professional job site. Before we leave that job site, our tools are organized, our job site's clean. We've walked over potential issues. As a lead guy, um, and especially if, if you know that one of your, your crew is newer uh, or they don't have a lot of experience in something, but you're constantly monitoring to make sure they're doing something correctly. Uh, I'll be honest, I, uh, I had to pull up quite a bit of flooring upstairs at Liberty because we didn't scrape the floor. So somebody who maybe wasn't familiar with making sure the floor is clean or using floor leveler, Right floor looked great, but there was lumps underneath there and you could feel them and it was starting to separate. So I had to go back through, clean all the floor, pull a whole bunch of floor back up, reset it, which took like twice as long. Um, so like, it's our responsibility if somebody's not familiar with something to babysit 100% of the time. It's just quality control. It's not the other guy's fault that he hasn't done it a whole bunch and we're all willing to learn and do stuff, but it costs the company money when you have to redo something. So we're trying to learn, you know, we've been talking, me, Joe, and Ben, we've been talking a lot about like, what can we do that everybody knows how to do, we can do it well, so we're not having to redo stuff all the time. Because I mean, as soon as we redo something one time, all the problems are gone. Like we're not, we're not trying to like triple profit off somebody. Like if I do a floor, I made $5, most of the time $5 per square foot for flooring. Um, most of the time the flooring costs three fifty, which leaves me a dollar fifty for labor. Okay, so as soon as we lay that floor, that's that dollar fifty. If you well, do that again, in, in other words, we, we charge between fifteen and thirty percent profit for jobs, and if it takes fifteen percent longer or thirty percent longer, and, and redoing the floor would take at least thirty percent longer. Mm -hmm. You lose 100% of your profit. Yeah, and as soon as you've lost profit, then, then it, it sets the whole job, you know, it, it's just hard for everybody. And everybody wants to do a good job. I'm like, that's one thing I know, like, we're not trying to screw around. We're not being lazy bums, we're trying to do a job. So it's frustrating when you're a new guy or an old guy like me, and you're having to redo something because it wasn't done right. You know, it's frustrating for all of us. So anyway, things to consider. Um, another thing, that goes into job issues is communication. It's, we've already talked about it plenty of times, just briefly going over it. Um, the thing that saved our company in many ways is that we're pretty good at this, especially uh, communicating with the customer. So the customer, like they may be pissed at us because we've taken two extra months, but we've communicated every single day we didn't show up we communicate as to why we're not there, whether it's scheduling or something else going on. And because of our communication, that can be like, so a lot of issues can be resolved. But what, what ends up breaking down is, you know, if we, uh, we fail to communicate, failing, failing to uh, communi communicate, Ends up, ends up causing a lack of trust with the customer. Um, one of the things that I ask for from all my lead guys is at least three pictures every day of work done. We have a separate chat for that. Uh, just so, so like say, say a color was wrong on something. Well, you only did like a little bit of it. You see your job pictures at the end of the day and I'm like, wait a second, why is that color there? So I instantly know something, you know. But communicating, making sure that we're on the same page, 
Um, and then the last thing for today, anyway, and I mean, this is kind of a big subject, but the last thing for today is, uh, hang on, I just had it in my mind. It was anything to do with jobs? Yeah, it was, it was, I don't know if it was quality. No. Safety. Quality, safety. safety. Quality control. I think, yeah, quality, I already quality control. What was it? It was something important. It was a good one, too. Um, I would say cleanliness, you know. Um, I don't yeah, think. You kind of covered that in quality. Yeah, it, it, it's in there, too. But, like, it's part of. It's part of being professional. I don't think that's how you spell luminous. But, um, oh, processes, that's what it was. Oh, um, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, because we're, we're trying to become McDonald's. Like, we're trying to have the same product every single time. You go to McDonald's, you get the same burger. That's what we're going for. And the only way we're going to get that is by, you know, being very good at, like, we do a walkthrough. We, like, the lead guy does his thing. The crew does their thing. Like, there's, there's even systems in place. Do stuff, it makes it easier for someone to learn if everybody does it the same way. Yeah. So failure to and do if there's something. A problem, you can edit it and it fixes it. It's like uh, always having holes in your outlets. Same way. I mean, like, so part of like one of the things that I've noticed is like we're getting really good at drywall. We're doing a lot better at drywall. But we still almost always have a couple uh, outlets that got cut out too big. And then we end up painting before we've actually patched them when they're not hard to patch, you know. Yeah. So, so then we go backwards in our process, you know. So the process would be like, we do the mudding. We check every single outlet, mm -hmm. you know, like we, every outlet we may also make sure we didn't cover up eight outlets seven. or seven <laughs> outlets, you know. Um, and then the process works, you know, and it protects us against stuff. So process is very important. Um, that's basically a, a basic synopsis of the J word, just jobs in general. And it's good for us to be aware because especially for us as a small company, one job can make us or break us, you know. And we've had several that, I mean, have pretty much broke us. I mean, right now I've got a lot of bills and I don't got a lot of money coming in. And uh, I mean, as much as I appreciate guys being willing to work, like that's a drain on my bank account. Like work doesn't necessarily help me at all if we're not producing quality jobs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, I need you guys all a part of it because there's occasional where we do one job that then pays for like four bad jobs just because we're all here and we need each other. Like PTO. Yeah, but, but at the same time, you know, we're going to go work on Liberty today again for the 11th month, you know, uh, and that job was a three month job. So you can just imagine the amount of resources that I've got out on that job that I'm not getting back because, you know, it took a lot longer. Some of that's because of our processes, so it's because we're busy and we're the scheduling. There's many, many things we can point to, but as we're learning, um, our goal is to find the job issues, create those processes, be aware that like, if I'm on site, I need to be doing something useful to help the company, uh, whether it's cleaning, whether it's, you know, spotting issues, whatever it is, you know, and that should work its way down. Just start with leadership, the sales team, project managers, lead guys, filter down to whoever's got a skill test. We're all better at certain things. The goal is to be aware of those things and like, Get our jobs done in a way that it makes us money and provides for our families. Okay. So it's that's not the, I, it's we. That's right. <laughs> yes. We're going to keep talking about that. I know. It's all of us.